29 is an example even when it's not obviously uh, uh, in focus we can tell this is acanthotic epidermis and it's dark purple so even on a low quality uh, not in focus scan the first thing i think of in that setting is bowen's disease squamous cell carcinoma in situ um, if you think if something looks kind of like psoriasis but it's dark blue dark purple it, that's a clue for Bowen's disease. If it looks like a SEB, but it's really dark, it could be Bowen's disease. Go closer and look for the atypia. Those are my low power clues for to think of Bowen's disease. Um, here in this case, you can see full thickness epithe, epi, epidermal replacement. Uh, uh, the whole epidermis is replaced by atypical uh, keratinocytes, big ugly cells, uh, mitotic activity. You'll see usually atypical mitosis if you look around. Um, sometimes you can get bizarre atypia. Sometimes it's a little not quite as bizarre, like this case is a little bit more monotonous. Um, you will often, in the Bowen's type of squamous situ, you'll often get pagetoid spread. You can get clear cell change, and the clear cell Bowen's can come, mimic um, uh, Paget's disease or melanoma in situ. I've got other videos about this, but I will tell you one thing. When you get top to bottom full thickness atypia, I, I have almost never seen that in melanoma or Paget's disease. I don't think I've ever seen it in Paget's. I've seen focal areas in, in melanoma, just a small zone where it got full thickness and, and consumed the, or replaced the full thickness of the epidermis. But those cases, I think every single one I can remember, were all like big, bad, invasive melanomas with obvious nests, pagetoid spread, confluence, pigment production, all the other stuff that were, they were 100% melanoma, no stains needed. Um, so I've never seen an in situ only melanoma that had an area of full thickness atypia replacing the epidermis. So that to me is the best clue to help you. Uh, also, that if you find uh, these kinds of um, bo uh, Bowen's disease uh, squamous in situ, as they spread out to the side, you will often find that they fill the epidermis and leave the basal layer, giving you an eyeliner sign. You don't always see an eyeliner sign. So if you see it, it's a great clue um, for a, a Bowen's disease squamous in situ rather than melanoma. But um, sometimes it, it's not pr present in Bowen's and sometimes melanomas can mimic the eyeliner signs. So, you know, it's not perfect. If in doubt, you can do stains CK56 or P40 to stain uh, Bowen's and uh, or you could just do a SOX10 to make sure that it's you know, or MART1 to make sure that this is not melanoma. Although recognize that in um, uh, squamous cell carcinoma in situ and other keratinocyte lesions, seborrheic keratoses, basal cell carcinomas too, you can have a colonization by benign dendritic melanocytes, particularly in, in squamous situ when there's pigment in it. If you do a melanocyte stain, you will find scattered melanocytes, sometimes even upward scatter of melanocytes that look like pagetoid spread. Uh, they will all be solitary with no nesting, um, and there won't be any melanoma beyond the edge of the lesion, but uh, that can be scary if you've never seen that before. So do keep that in mind that scattered solitary melanocytes, even with upward scatter, can be seen in the background of keratinocyte lesions, including squamous cell carcinoma, basal cell carcinoma, seborrheic keratosis. And, and they're benign melanocytes that are colonizing it. So, so I've got some uh, images of that. And then look, a bonus finding, a little nevus.